Hey everybody, Mix Live Show number 10. I'm Chemist here and really happy to have you all with us. Uh, 10 hours so far, pretty impressive. We'll kill this fan, we'll get a little better audio for everybody on the phones. All right, so we are on episode 10. I'm excited to have with us uh, two illustrious co-hosts. Uh, so that's what Wayne always says. Huh? <laughs> I got Steam Room, Concrete River, and we're going to have Jennifer Jarvis jumping on later. Say hello, Clayton, to everyone, and tell us what that scale's like. What's up, fellas? I can't reveal nothing yet, but I will Damn. tell you, it's weak. It's weak. Weak. That's one all I can say is it's star. weak. Heard. I mean, it's 1,200 RPM. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll put that out there. I'm going to be completely honest in the review. I mean, yes, I got it free, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to love it. So, yeah, you can't complain with free, but you know, when you're doing a review for everybody, people are going to be pissed if you tell them to go buy it and then they go out and buy it and it's trash. So, you right. got that. There's a couple cool features. I mean, I'll, I'll put it that way. It does trump, in, in terms of features, it does trump a lot of the uh, other heat slash third plates that are out there. Um, but it, it could have used a lot more power. Uh, I'll just say that. Okay. Let me get the YouTube chat up and running for everybody. I uh, hope everybody that's watching has had a really good week. And I uh, hope life's treating you well. hope you're mixing good stuff. Uh, let's see. Let me jump over to uh, Concrete River. He can tell you a little bit about his, his day of flavor testing and uh, all that good stuff. Good day, hey sir. Um, yeah, flavor testing, man. The entire week, I don't know. Uh, Flavoris Kiwi is really, really weird. Uh, but I did come across Flavoris Jackfruit this week, and so that kind of makes up for everything. Their uh, Jackfruit is a lot like TPA's Jackfruit, but juicier and kind of more realistic. It's uh, really, really good stuff. So if you're in, in the market for a Jackfruit, uh, go ahead and pick that one up. So does it, did you, did you say it's realistic and not like uh, the juicy fruit? Is that what you just said? Um, it's a little bit juicier uh, than TPA's jackfruit. I'd like to say it's it tastes realistic. I don't know. I, I haven't ever actually ate a jackfruit, but if that's what jackfruit tastes like, totally and completely down with it. It's kind of like an overripe pineapple back note. Um, I'd primarily be using it for like pineapples and mangoes, but honestly anything even vaguely tropical or um like apples and pears and plums that kind of stone fruit thing i think can make a really good accent in the background to kind of add some juiciness and also like take things just to the verge of being a little bit overripe which is where fruit actually gets kind of sweet and delicious so yeah i really dug that one yeah i've been i uh i found a little secret is uh the greek yogurt flavora uh, really low, like a 0.25 uh, to 0.75 if you're trying to shake and vape something, gives almost that ripe, uh, unripe banana note. Like in, by itself, it'd be nasty, but if you were putting it behind a banana, it, it gives kind of that the ripe note that you don't realize is kind of like a rotten flavor. But So that that's a trick for somebody to try. Uh, I found... When I was doing banana tests, it helped make it more like a actual chunk of banana rather than like a banana candy flavor. Yeah, some added realism in fruits. I think fruits are tricky because everybody wants like a bright fruit flavor, but it's hard to do really bright without um, veering kind of into the candy direction. And so I think a lot of getting a fruit absolutely nailed is figuring out the uh, the off notes from that fruit and kind of adding back in some of those off notes in a really judicious way to kind of enhance the entire experience. But I think I'm probably just trying to justify the fact that I kind of want to make my fruits taste just barely rotten. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, uh, if you go look and uh, it's coffee uh, culture flavor wheel. And if you search that they have like a, it's like a disgusting flavor wheel they've done. And it has uh, 
like cheese and mold and dirty and so they've made a flavor wheel that is uh has all these weird crazy things let me see if i'll see if i can pull it up for you uh, it's it's very strange but it, it's it's like what you're talking about is those other flavors that we don't necessarily think of uh with like the rotten or the moldy or the uh, almost even the alcohol uh a lot of fruits when they're getting ripe have almost like an alcohol note to them almost uh let's see what are you va vaping on guys what are you concrete what's your uh current flavor that you got in there i'm gonna be the most boring person in the world my taste buds are kind of shot already for the day i did my testing early and it was favoris milk which just kind of ruined <laughs> everything it's it's not a bad flavor but somebody uh on reddit had the broad idea of well you know you guys say that you can take these favora flavors up high and sometimes they work again so five percent favora milk will definitely destroy your palate for the day uh, oh, God. <laughs> right now i just have uh menthol um just enough menthol that the bottle starts to gel if it gets cold so i think i'm probably doing it right yeah, I think I should do a, like a nice mint because I've been messing with the culotta and I've been, you know, I just haven't ever jumped in and done, like, and it's so funny because when I, when I smoked, I used to smoke uh, menthol. So it was crazy because that was my flavor of choice. And I don't think I've, I think I played with it right when I started and it like put too much in and then I was like, oh, forget this. And it kind of burned me on it. But I think I'm going to try to get back into maybe doing like a nice mint type of recipe. Uh, let's see. Uh, what are you vaping on, Clayton? If I can get this unmuted. I'm keeping it kind of simple today as well as just a simple raspberry custard. Did you uh, mix it up yourself? Did it? No, it was a recipe I found on uh, all the flavors I was floating around. I need to go give some feedback. Um, it's kind of an older recipe. Um, I went to the back, back, back pages of ATF to see what was there, and I ran across the uh, raspberry custard. I mixed it up about a week ago. It's tasting pretty damn good now. Nice. It's like page number 204 or something on the recipes. Right, just some random recipe. Yeah, but it had like three stars. It looked tasty, so I just mixed it up. It's pretty good. Yeah, I'm vaping on a um, – it's actually a like – a, I would call it like a failure. Like it's not one that I put out or anything. And uh, I think it was the second round of an orange cream, like that orange dream cream with the, the premium FA Royal Orange in there. And uh, with this one, I added some uh, Loran banana cream to it. And it almost gave it, uh, it gave it like a, a dull pineapple orange juice kind of feel. Like, uh, I don't know if you ever had those, but like, it's like a banana, orange, strawberry, but you don't really taste the strawberry. It's more like orange, banana, citric, kind of acid flavor. And uh, yeah, I'm, I haven't mixed a new recipe uh, for the, the public release or for my stuff in a couple of days. So this kind of was sitting there and uh, I gave it a smell test and it was good stuff. So. Yeah, it tastes like the, the dole kind of, which is cool. And uh, let's see. I I can announce uh, my flavor coming to E-Cig Express uh, sometime in the next couple weeks. It is called Sugar Cookie Fluff, and it's like a 10, reci 10 flavor recipe, real complex for something real simple. And... Uh, I wanted to create something that I thought most people would really like, no matter what your palate, where you go with it. And then something that would cater to new mixers. And it's cool. It's a really good recipe. And I think it's going to do really well. Uh, it's the first flavor that the E-Juice Makers team has gotten to the U.S. Uh, in a bottle. Uh, Concrete and uh, ID10T were the first to actually hit the market other than Wayne. So if, if you take DIY or die and Wayne out of the USA, there was nothing else. And, uh, you know, a year from, from when we started about, you know, we got some flavor packs going on with Bull City. And then uh, for us to be able to finally, 
uh, get in the door with some of these flavor houses in the U.S., I think it's going to be great for people because, you know, with Wayne being the only U.S. option, I saw someone post on DIY or Die the other day, and they're like, these are the, you know, the seven recipes I tried, and they were all Wayne's recipes. And then they tried to do uh, Manson's, uh, you know, strawberry short, short dick bar, that was the original name. And um, like that was the only extent of her mixing experience and she was burned out, she didn't like it. And that's, you know, I would, I would say if you're mixing, if you mix someone's recipe and it's not where you like to vape, whether it be sweetness or, um, you know, just the way they flavor, chances are you're not gonna like many of, of their recipes unless, unless they are purposefully going up and down on levels for different reasons. So if you're trying like four or five of Wayne stuff and you don't like it, try something else. There's so many good mixers out there and you're gonna find the right mixer that makes exactly the flavor and style that you like. And when you find that, then you know every recipe is like a new uh, gift almost for you because you like the last 10, well, here's a new one, you know, and that really creates a nice uh, following between us as like mixers. And then uh, you, you as people that are mixing up our recipes, it's going to be so much more uh, enjoyable for you to find mixers that mix the way you like rather than just wild shot picking uh, different recipes on the LR. You know, so I would suggest definitely doing that. And then with these one shots, I think you're going to see a lot from, from all these guys on the team, uh, a lot of interest on different things. So as, as we start to roll out flavor lines of one shots for everybody, uh, you're going to get a lot more options to be able to like grab a one shot, shake and mix it and and that's really what england has like when chris and i started doing uh things in england you know there's there's like 20 or 30 different options of brands there are 10 to 20 different flavors from those one shot brands so you as a, a vapor can like take a month break grab two or three different one shot brands from different ones and get totally different vape experiences so it's really cool if you if you haven't looked at UK and how England does things, it's it's very impressive as far as uh, they you know they seem to be like a year or two ahead when it comes to the flavor uh, one shot and vaping the way that whole industry works. And uh, I'd like to introduce another guest to this show, Jennifer Jarvis, fresh off of her live show on Sweet Sticky Rice. Hello. How are you? Can't hear. Screaming babies. No, I was just trying to fix my my audio. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it sounds good. How's your show? I went longer than I expected I was going to. <laughs> but I tried some flavorings. Cool. How's that sticky rice? What's the what's the oh, verdict? It's so good. I vaped that much. Is that the mix? That's your mix you made? Is that yeah, that's, up? that's rice pudding. <laughs> it's delicious. What did you do with it? Uh, vanilla pudding, flavor? Vanilla pudding, custard, and cream. And rich cinnamon. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I know. Yeah, I can tell that would be good. So the, the sweet rice, what would you describe it as if you were doing like a quick, I mean, is it uh, like a wet rice? You just made rice fresh? It uh, smells like can... basmati rice out of the bag. So like it's... solid, yeah. Yeah, so get that. Sol solid rice before it's cooked, just sniffing the bag, it's, that's what it smells like. Uh, concrete, have you gotten a hold of this uh, the sweet rice yet? Uh, no, I, I, I haven't jumped aboard the rice train. I've got about 18 things I'm playing with, but my next DCX order, I'm definitely going to throw it on there. I'm I'm definitely intrigued at this point. Everybody seems to be really digging it. So I'll be there, but, you know, like three months late to the party like usual. <laughs> Flavor note. <laughs> but he'll come around and bang it out, and he'll bring some news to the uh, industry with it, I'm sure. He'll be like, guys, I'd like to review a couple. Uh, there's a... F.A. Aurora. <laughs> See, the entire trick is you go ahead and you do the flavor review after everybody's already gotten a hold of it. So you can just plagiarize the entire thing. So 
you know, makes everything considerably easy. Um, for what it's worth, though, a lot of times I do like going back over and doing some of those flavors that are a little bit more established, just because it's nice to have that built-in bullshit check. Um, my taste buds don't work exactly like everybody else's, and it's it's really good to know that, you know, either I'm not crazy for thinking it isn't fantastic or knowing that I'm definitely in the minority. And I can go ahead and give you a review on the flavor with the caveat that I'm probably not getting the same thing that the majority of people seem to be getting. Well, I mean, you single flavor test a lot and not everybody uh, takes the time to rock through it week by week by week to really get an understanding for it. So I think you, you get to know the flavor better than most people where other people might have only experienced the flavor in a recipe. You know, they've never done the testing or they've never uh, tried to make their own recipes. That's where that really helps is, is taking the time to do that. Uh, and when you do that, it really helps everybody. I mean, I remember seeing those uh, flavor reviews come through and they always, you know, were real impressive. Before we even knew each other or were working together, it was really impressive to see just uh, the content at with which you pushed out flavor notes and then the quality of them where you really got to know the flavor, uh, you know, a, very similar to the way Jennifer has that super taster kind of, she picks up a lot of different notes and things that other people uh, miss. Concrete, what are your three most underrated flavorings right now that people don't use but should? Uh, flavor art raspberry. I, I, I know that one's just slightly controversial, but it's absolutely my favorite raspberry. It's probably up there with my, my favorite, uh, fruit flavors. I, I also think that, uh, pink guava by Flavora gets a lot of love, but I'm not sure it gets enough love because it's absolutely fantastic. I could vape just straight pink guava at this point, um, and be completely happy. And then, um, I've been messing around a lot with, cause everybody knows like the stuff like cactus and dragon fruit and stuff that sounds weird, but it's absolutely fantastic. But I've sort of fallen back in love with TPA marshmallow lately a lot too. And I'm using that not so much as a flavor, but just more, more for a mouthfeel additive. And I haven't really found too many recipes where 0.25 or 0.5 of TPA marshmallow is going to do a bad thing to the recipe. So I definitely appreciate that. Yeah, it has a, a, a little bit of uh, maltol or EM in it, but it's if you're using it that low, it's not going to really do anything to hurt it too bad. I'm a, I'm a big fan of that too, is the the, the marshmallow uh, TPA, but it tends to mute things down. And then it's what got me kicked from that uh, mixer comp as I used, uh, I used TPA instead of flavor art not thinking it would affect anything. And then uh, it totally got me where it muted the grape down. So if I would have had flavor art to use on that grape bubble gum, it would have worked better. So I, the, with the, the marshmallow, I always, uh, if I'm going for like a marshmallow uh, where I want to not bring down the recipe, I'll use flavor art. But then uh, TPA, uh, it just tastes good. It's got a sweet, nice flavor to it. And it's not really marshmallow like a wild homemade marshmallow type of thing, but it's like a, a jet puff kind of ghetto marshmallow feel. So let's and, see. Yeah, go on. What are you saying? Oh, I, and I was just going to say, and really, I haven't found too much that actually beats that mouthfeel on there too. It's just so nice and thick and solid. Um, it's kind of a crutch. I mean, I should probably just learn to mix better. But it's been really helpful for uh, for adding that kind of thickness and even taking down some sharper fruit notes too, kind of selectively using that muting. Now, on that guava, when you mix it, are you mixing it? Uh, you said you'd mix it straight. Would you pair that with uh, Capella Sweet Guava or would that not really add to it? What do you like with those two together? Um, it's funny that you say that, uh, actually one of my favorite recipes that I made was a, uh, Cabela sweet guava, uh, just right up front. I think it's, I don't have the recipe in front of me, but I want to say it's like five or 6%. It's crazy up there, but with some pink guava back up there and then, uh, some Yakima hops too. Huh. Yeah. Um, and 
I think there's actually some uh, some Loran's cream cheese icing in there. The entire thing is like uh, I think Dave described it as uh, grapefruit shandy, but it has this like weird, crazy mouthfeel, and the uh, pink guava is picking up on some of the sweet guava notes. You don't really get like a clear, clear grapefruit, but it kind of enhances that kind of tart part in the sweet guava, which is a lot flatter of a flavor. Is there a, a good grapefruit? Like I've, I've never even tried to mix with the grape with a grapefruit, so I don't know uh, what is. Is there a go-to grapefruit that is worthy of using? Um, I use all of them <laughs> often at the same time. Like I hate to talk about another one of my recipes, but I have a grapefruit recipe out there called Terra Hawk, which. I like to think is one of the more accurate Ruby red grapefruit recipes and it uses pink guava up front. It uses flavor West Ruby red grapefruit, which I like, but it's a little bit flat. And then um, I get a lot of zest out of it and whereas white grapefruit. So it uses a small percentage of that to kind of bring some of the zest back in. Um, there's some Jasmine in there to kind of simulate the pith note on there. Uh, so yeah, grapefruit, Grapefruit is actually pretty legit. I don't know. It's one of my favorite flavors to mess with. You know, I'm the worst host because I haven't looked at the chat till now. So sorry, everybody. Uh, let's see. Those, rec those recipes sound good. If you can maybe, uh, I guess, on the on the eJuice Makers page or the Mix Life group, maybe throw, uh, throw those out if they're public. That would be yeah. Dying. Yeah, I can definitely do that. I'll go ahead and drop uh, light links in the Mix Life page, and then um, if anybody wants to look them up, they're both on ATF. The uh, Ruby Red Grapefruit Juice is named Terror Hawk, and then uh, the um, Guava one with the grapefruit in it is Fiestas and Fiascos. So those are both on my ATF page, and I'll get links up for those. Nice, nice. All right, let's go to Jennifer Jarvis. We're gonna let you head out concrete. Thanks for joining us. Your presence is always appreciated. Uh, yeah, good to hang out, man. I'll, uh, I'll catch you later. Thanks for coming. All right, Jennifer, let's talk some flavors. <laughs> I, I, I heard, I heard flavors? Somebody, somebody wrote an article about sugar. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was, I've, I've been working on that one for a while. That's good. And that took two weeks to actually sit down and write everything. Very impressive. <laughs> very impressive. Your writing is always just. That, that's only the first part, too. There's like another section that needs to go with that. But <laughs> that was just kind of the basics of, of the sugar and, you know, the flavorings. And these are the possible effects. And, you know, the tobacco and... Uh, I didn't actually link to it, but there's a tobacco study that looked at sugar being added to the tobacco, enhancing those specific carcinogenic uh, molecules. So whether sugar actually creates those carcinogenic molecules or if it enhances them, that is something we should be aware of because PG and VG do release some of those molecules. And if sugar is enhancing it, then that's making it worse in general if that's in the flavorings so i mean we should be able to know whether we want to take that risk or not not necessarily saying you shouldn't vape this just if you know then you can say i can take this risk i accept that it's fine so i mean what i personally happened, can't vape it what happened with flavor west because for some people they don't know uh, you know what i've come across is i've talked to some vendor e -juice vendors that just it totally messed up their business model because they were relying on certain flavors and something happened a few years ago. Uh, but I mean, all the pro mixers have a bad feeling in their stomachs with flavor well, West. Cause flavor West was lying <clears throat> to everybody. <laughs> they were flat out lying. They were like, no, there's no sugar. There's no diacetyl. There's no nothing in these flavorings. They're perfectly clean. Like, no, they're not. <laughs> How did they get exposed? Did someone do a, uh, like a lab it, test? Or? Yeah, there was uh, one, one company was doing all the lab tests of everybody's juices, and they started testing some of the flavorings too, just individual yeah. flavorings. And they realized, oh, these are full of diacetyl. 
And the same with Capellas. Capellas was lying up and down saying, oh, our V1 Custer doesn't have diacetyl. Oh, so there's a, time, there's a time where they didn't acknowledge it either, huh? So, oh, yeah. They were saying it was less than four parts per million. So it was less than the trace amount, which we all know is not the fact. <laughs> it's much higher than four parts per million. And then so that that came out. And then what was the, you know, because they're, they're still Flavor West recipes and there's still flavors oh, yeah. from, from there that sort of, uh, what what's from your view? I mean, is it is it a relevant company or is it a company that should go away? Do you think? Uh, I think they really they should be avoided for commercial juice because unless the vendor is going to release this contains sugar, you know, this contains diacetyl, this contains, it j tell people up front, but they don't want to do that because that's bad for marketing. So, yeah, you know, it really shouldn't be a flavoring company that commercial juices are using. They should try to avoid those things unless they're going to blatantly tell the consumers, this is in this. You know, as far as DIYers go, you know, we, we mix with all sorts of random stuff. <laughs> I mean, I've known people, I've used Fairy's Finest. I mean, I know some of those aren't clean. <laughs> right. Now, what are your thoughts as far as uh, if we were if we were sorting different uh, brands by uh, like health? Your from your opinion, you're you're a healthy vapor, I'd say. So, what wh what would you rank them health wise? If you're aiming to mix as clean as possible, probably Flavor Art, Flavora, and then going down the line, the ones that have released their actual stuff is TFA and you know, Capella's and then Flavor West and Lorian's is way at the bottom because they don't tell us anything. Lorian's is just hush hush. They're like, don't use this for vaping. Right. So, so those, that's how they get out of it. So if you're a new mixer and you're trying to figure it all out, uh, Lorian's and uh, Flavor West would probably be the last things you'd want to use. Uh, well, you can check Flavor West stuff. I mean, Bull City Vapor does have some warnings on the, or Bull, Bull City Flavors has some warnings on their website. You can look at all the SDS and MDS, MDSDs sheets on Flavor West's website. So you can see what's in it. I mean, flavors like the Apple Jacks flavor has balsam of Peru in it. That's not, a, <laughs> that's not an extract we should be vaping. <laughs> Not at all. That is total inhalation irritant and possibly toxic. So, you know, the, the, if you are curious as to what's in the stuff, you can actually go and look and see, you know, briefly, they kind of cover some things that are in it. They don't tell you everything on those sheets, but at least you have those available. TFAs is on their site too. Yeah, I've, I've been using the TFA one and then just, just Google, uh, the perfume apprentice and then MDS yep. and it comes, it comes up and if you hit the last link. It says list. It's got all the ingredients wow. that are in it. So before you mix with a new flavor, there's nothing better than going in there and seeing uh, exactly what's in it. Uh, yep. And Flavora has theirs up and I believe um, flavor arts is now on the us.flavorart.com website as well. So that's great for flavor art to have it up. That's going to be helpful for us to see kind of what's in those as well. And then, uh, and, and as far as I know, Walt, it, I'm actually got to talk to Walt tomorrow, I believe, but he was talking to me about, um, you know, putting a badge, maybe if we thought it was a good idea for sugar containing or sweetener containing on their flavorings as well, which I think is a good idea. I mean, if it contains a sweetener or sugar, you should let us know. Now, so when uh, when people are coming from a vape vape world and they think that they're vaping sugar, they're not vaping sugar. No, for the most part, you're va vaping sucralose. Right. So, people that that come away thinking that vaping sugar is already something that's happening, or like when you got a vape shop, you know, product that it was sweet, so there must be sugar in it. Uh, that you know that's a the differentiator and I think maybe some people coming in uh, you know into this for for a, a new person uh, there's certain things you should read the article actually let's see if we 
grab the li the link because it's it's important for you to understand. And like Jennifer made a point in the article, and that's the most important point I think that you know you as a mixer, you as a recipe creator, you know, if you're going to use trash ingredients or sketchy ingredients, uh, you know, not everyone's going to know that. So they might want to be vaping a, a healthy option. And then you're putting in things that you don't care about, but you should convey that message. And the same thing for vape shops and, you know, uh, flavor lines is that, you know, you're going to put yourself in a real bad position down the road if you're not accountable for your own products. So if you're not already accountable and you're, you know, like Flavor West, let the FDA get a hold of like the, the concept of, uh, you know, oh, they're, they're adding sugar because they're trying to candy the kids, you know, and yeah. things like that. Well, it's candy flavoring. That's the thing. <laughs> Flavor West is meant for candy. So, I mean, when you're using something that's meant for candy, is there's no problem with putting fructose or, you know, sugar syrup or caramel coloring, which caramel coloring is nothing but burnt car carbohydrates. So that's you, essentially the same thing as, as sugar. So, you know, you so it's almost it, like... They've got a couple of those with the caramel coloring in it too. So with flavor, flavor is the flavor and flavor art really have catered toward the vapor, you'd say. Yes, and Flavora and Flavor Art are both creating flavorings with vaping in mind. Um, I know Flavor Art initially started as a food flavoring vendor, which is why they have some that are, you know, not meant for vaping. Ones that have oils in them and stuff that are purely for cooking. Um, they generally don't sell those to the vape shops. I, I think some of them are spices and, and those kind, the breads and stuff. Um, but for the most part, since they've broke off into uh, Flavor Art UK and Flavor Art North America, they've really focused on just designing for vaping. And I know Flavora was designed specifically with vaping in mind. Like it's not meant for food, it's meant for vaping. Yeah, and that's, that's what you, you think about is that like, either have a company like Loran that, uh, just we want nothing to do with vaping. You have uh, TPA who kind of like don't release they straddle it. They straddle it. Yeah, they'll be like, oh, this one doesn't, this isn't flammable. But we didn't yeah. tell you that before. We're just telling you now <laughs> the orange cream will light on fire, but orange cream bar won't. So non flammable version now available, which, you know. <laughs> so those are, those that's are, more of a shipping issue. Yeah, because uh, I mean, once we mix it into to PG and VG, it's you know the alcohol evaporates fast enough that it's not that big of an issue. I mean, so nature's funny. flavors are alcohol-based flavorings. The comments, so, the comments are like, "Is this gonna light on fire?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why is why is my Addy on fire? Yeah. <laughs> I actually got a message earlier from somebody asking me about their. <laughs> Their their cotton's about dry and their atomizers coils lighting on fire. It's like, well, wet your cotton, you goober. Jesus. <laughs> Is it supposed to burn a flame like this? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know how to answer that. It's like, well, I don't know yeah. why. Maybe you should wet your stuff a little better. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Like, there should be a stupid check on Facebook comments and questions. They got to pass a, a test. Oh, speaking of, yeah, that's, speaking of that, I saw this uh, for Facebook groups, they're adding a, a three question test you can do uh, before they can join the group. And I thought that'd be funny. <laughs> I thought that'd be funny to ask like three like hard, hard questions. They would. I know, never would thought be, of that. that. That's a good, yeah, you should implement that, Adam. Right. You know, just some simple, simple, uh, you know, mixing questions, but. I had somebody tried? The other day ask me if they should mix it 70-20 or 60-30. I was like, what? <laughs> you're trolling, right? You're, you're trolling right now. Yeah. It can't be real. Your numbers don't add up, sir. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> What's your, uh, what, about, what do you think about Flavor West and kind of the flavor safety thing? How do you me? feel about it? Yeah. You, all the bad stuff tastes delicious to me, so I, I vape it all. Right. I mean, I generally, I mean, if I try to push like, 
when I try to do, you know, formulate a recipe for the public, I keep in mind, you know what I mean? Like I'll mention use V2 if you're concerned or whatever, you know, uh, like here at our business. Um, well, it's not really my business. I'm just a gear in the machine, but you know, I do, I'm very vocal about that in our mixing practices. Uh, Capella is like, we're like one of the biggest customers from Capella's on the East coast in the United States. And, um, you know, I'm very vocal about that with the owners. You know, I'm like, think about using V2, you know, think about it. Uh, because, you know, we do have uh, a few other companies I can't disclose for NDA reasons, obviously. Um, but we do deal with them a lot. And um, that's one of the things that I can respect about Capella. You know, they're, they've gotten their stuff together in terms of, like, dealing with vapors. Um, you know, they're very upfront with their MSDSs, at least with us. You know, I haven't really looked into it online. But they do stand out with all their shipments and MSDS document, um, you know, what that juice contains. So I'm very... I'm very thankful for that from that company. Flavor West, I don't really care. I mean, we don't deal we don't deal with them here at the shop. Like Jen said, the owners are of the belief that if it's made for candy, specifically, it should be used for candy. Um, so, I, I, mad respect to them for that. You know. So, if you use Flavor West and Lorand at your own risk, would be. A I good. love Lorand. And not all Flavor West flavors are have bad stuff in them. So it's not the entire line, but. If you see ones that say, you know, sugar warning or, or fruit contains fructose or caramel coloring, those are the ones you, you, you know, know that you're taking a risk with, and do it's you gonna clog your coils do, up. Do you own any Flavor West? I have. Uh, of course, she has yellow cake. That's known as cake. I had a bottle of yellow cake. I think I threw it out. It was so. <laughs> it was. It was like two years old, and it was totally full. <laughs> Turn black. Yeah, it turns black. It's pretty dark. Yeah, it does. It's grimy. I I tried a uh, cookie, the cookie batter or whatever it was. That one was oh, yeah. bad. Instant wheezing. Yeah, that one's <laughs> grimy too. It makes a good cookie though. You gotta. It's delicious. It's it's the start of a good cookie. It's the piece, it's the piece of a cookie that you can't get anywhere it, else. It smells like it should be too. Instantly, it was like burnt. That's all I tasted yeah. was burnt from that. <laughs> like, <"Nah." laughs> too much. I liked it. I liked it at <laughs> first, but some of these, like, you know, maybe talk about Jennifer that somebody was saying that flavors go bad. Uh, oh, yeah, they flavors, do. They do. And then what's the shelf time? And then what are your, what's well, your experience with that? Here's an example. This is Best Buy August 2017. It's however, it's like two years old. It's smelling weird. It's known as cake that I got from Bull City back when it was Bull City Vapor. I've got. What is a, what's a good uh, time period to be like, this thing's going in the trash? Ooh. Like what? This caramel was used before November 2016. <laughs> it, I actually experienced that quite a bit, actually. I got a huge, like, 16-ounce bottle back in 2015 because I was going to be a juice line. You know, it was before <laughs> I, got my, uh, I got my feet wet, really, and jumped into the community and, and started feeding off of people like you and Jennifer and Concrete and Dave and all these wonderful resources that we have now. Back in 2015, you know, you had to dig deep into the uh, Reddit side of things to really get information. Yeah. Even Wayne wasn't really even there. Right. You know? But yeah, I got like, you know, Wayne, Wayne's putting out Reddit quality content now, but when I came in and started doing it, it was Reddit or good luck figuring it out. You know, that's that's been the difference is that you know through all all of our teams work now it's Reddit, YouTube, multiple Facebook groups, an app, multiple YouTube channels. So there's a lot of options now where a new mixer can pick who they like to hear from rather than have to just, uh, you know, go with whatever's there. So that's good. There's a lot of options, I think. Yeah, it's really awesome. You know, these collaborations that are happening. <laughs> How old is that? Happening. I can tell it's damn old. Lot number, uh, the lot date it's is from February 2015. And oh. it's going to be two uh, cupcake. And it smells like vomit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, I had to throw away probably close to, uh, I don't know, 10 ounces of uh, TFA Bavarian cream because, you know, it was like rancid. It yeah, actually, went bad. Yeah, dude, it tasted like cheese, man. It was rough. All right, so no, I, I read. This is, 
this is a year and a half old or almost two years old now and it's dolce from tfa it smells fine dolce de leche i've got some old yeah. stuff so nice. so some some are good some have a longer shelf life it depends on how stable the flavorings are any hey, of the mango smells about right i've got a whole crap load down here of, of different flavors and hey, look at the color of this pineapple <laughs> <laughs> it looks orange. It smells fine. It smells like the pineapple normally does. Okay, so I came across this article and I couldn't find it. I tried to find it for somebody that was like, prove it, right? It is an it was an Australian kid that was a flavor creator. Like he had done flavor science as his job, and then he had started his own vaping flavor uh line right making almost like his own one shots for people but really on the extraction side where he's actually making the flavor and then he's using those to make like a final flavor he made these uh final vape products like uh three samplers and he sent the three samplers to one of the biggest australian review guys or new zealand review guys and the guy got sick supposedly from his juice and supposedly the juice made him vomit. Okay. The explanation that the, the mixer guy came back with was that his custard or one of his creams had gone rancid and that had created all the batches that then made people sick. So that was his story. So I didn't know if, you know, does that hold up? Do you think Jennifer does it? Oh yeah. I mean, I've got, dihydro cumarin cumarin or however it's pronounced this is probably two and a half years old now this smells kind of funny i mean they the molecules go rancid eventually a lot of these only have a three to six month shelf life before they're actually mixed once they're mixed then Oh, that smells really funky. <laughs> so, you know, they they have a little more stability once they're mixed in with the base carriers. But even then, you know, some may only last three months. Some may last a year and a half, two years. So it just depends on the stability of the actual flavoring. Okay, so if you are out there and you have two or three-year-old flavorings, consider checking them like she just did and see... Uh, if anything smells like it's going oh, yeah. bad, you know, you'll maybe. smell it when it's gone weird because it's either no smell whatsoever, you smell nothing because it's completely dead, or it's rancid or bad. It's just you'll you'll know that how bad it is what, by how much it makes you go. <laughs> right, and you don't want to you don't be making yourself sick or your friends sick or whoever is vaping your juice, your girlfriend or boyfriend, husband, wife. Yeah. So. No. Make sure you're using clean ingredients and then make sure you're using fresh ingredients. Uh, and th those are both things that I don't think many, many uh, new vapors are going to know about. And no, I've, this is why it's best to, when you're first trying stuff, buy the small bottles. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've got 10 mils of stuff of flavor art because I just went through and dumped out. I had 30 mil bottles up here on my rack. I dumped all of them because they were all going off. And it's like, I've got some that, you know, these are bigger bottles that I've got that are like a year old. And I mean, look how much I haven't used much of that at all. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous how little you end up actually using. You're going to have to do like a half filled uh, concentrate giveaway or something. Yeah, I, I actually am one of the guys in the group since he lives near me. I'm going to throw a bunch of flavors at him. I got a whole eight ounce bottle of Nona's cake for him. <laughs> He's got he's got four ounces of sour wizard, four ounces of strawberry that I haven't even opened. Clayton's like, am I that guy? <laughs> no, Jen's already sent me plenty of chocolate. <laughs> I would I would not ask him. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, Jennifer did, is great. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, you go. She's I would say she's great at, you know, the flavors. Definitely gave us a bunch of flavors to to work with. Uh, you know, that helps everybody at the end of the day because everyone gets, you know, a nice, especially with Flavor, like, you'd yeah, rather we... This yeah. is my Nona's cake. Right. I've got a whole liter of it, and I'm never going to get through it. <laughs> you know, and I think Flavor, the, that's a real great service that the, the e-juice makers kind of crew is working on is going through and filtering 
what to buy, what not to buy. I'm because, so far behind, dude. But the well, but you know, uh, you know, concrete's still putting them out there, and then you know, just in our shows, you're hearing from you know, you, me, her, whoever, about the quality of, of certain ones, and then ones we don't like. But that lets a lot of people say like, oh, I'm not gonna have to spend ten bucks to find out that I didn't like it. So this that's, one, the Tai Chai and Lychee. Tai Tai -chai. And a little bit of papaya um, punch, a little bit of mango, a little bit of pink guava, and a little bit of passion fruit. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I, I, it's so, but the Thai chai in there is just so nice. Like I love that flavor so much. <laughs> yeah, I worked with it. I can't, I can't remember what I did with it, uh, but I, I, I made like a. Uh, I made a couple with that, and I like that one. I had a couple, so I got a couple flavora from uh, the UK. So we want couple, and I won a contest each, and we both got a ton of flavors from that. And we picked up a bunch of flavora, which was kind of a dick thing to do, but they were selling them for like two or three bucks for a little, <laughs> uh, you know, ten mil bottle instead of you know ten or twelve. So we picked up like ten, fifteen each, and. Uh, I like the blueberry muffin. That one was great. And then the, the chai, thai, thai chai tea. Uh, I, I would like to take the blueberry out of the blueberry muffin. Because yeah. that muffin flavor is okay, but the blueberry flavor is delicious compared to the regular blueberry, which is kind of candy-ish. So yeah, I think they're, they're missing, they're missing, when they make flavors, they've been making flavors for final end products, right? So it's like, oh, this is a blueberry muffin. But I'd be much happier with just a muffin. Yeah. I think, right? And then we could make it blueberry or banana nut or whatever we want. Uh, I think there's there is that disconnect right now between the flavoring companies. I, Flavora would be the most ahead, I would say, because they started creating the heat and the cool uh, or the ice, you know, and they're starting to think more uh, of flavor. Yeah, of where the flavor notes are. Let me show you guys this. Uh, let's see if I still got it up. One here. additive I'd like to know if it's in any kind of flavorings would be MSG. Because oh, right? Jesus. It, it, it's not unheard of to add MSG to a flavoring, but would they have to tell us? Not really. If they did do that it would be nice if you know flavoring companies said oh this additive has msg in it you know the tfa smooth has msg in it i'm not saying it does but you know if that's what created that right. effect you know that would it would be nice to know if yeah if that's something we're vaping because not everybody wants to vape that exactly. and who knows how it is for inhalation safety. can you guys see that can you see this yep. all right so this is that uh flavor off, off flavors yeah, so you have you know decomposed fruit, you have mold, aged or faded, tainted, over roast. The and devil's these, flavor wheel. Yeah, <laughs> wood smoke. But they're all flavors that you wouldn't necessarily think of ever. <laughs> you never. But there's oh there's, band aid. What flavoring yeah. tastes like band aid? It was uh, one of the chocolates tastes like band aid. See, so wasn't you, it? It was Inawera's chocolate. The yeah, original so, had that so, band aid note to it. If you're looking for a Band-Aid flavor. But uh, this... Yeah, cardboard. And then, and flavor so, of tricks. So that's Tricky called cereal a... cereal is cardboard. That's a flavor wheel right there. <laughs> so some of you might not know what a flavor wheel is. And a real one is going to look like this. This is... Actually, uh, the uh, language of flavors article that I have on my site, I have a whole host of wheels on it and oh, descriptions. Uh, it won't show it. I tried. Okay. You guys can look that up. It's cool stuff. Um, there's also a book called The Flavor Bible, and it is awesome. Yep. Uh, it goes A to Z flavors and then their pairings. So uh, as you've seen, like the, the fruit, like apple pairs well with cherry, apple pairs well with pear, you know, that kind of combination. This whole book is that. And it's just a great thing. If you got, you know, if you're looking for a good book uh, that that works with DIY, uh, this thing is. If really you're wandering cool. around Reddit, you might be able to find it in PDF form. Yeah, I got the I got the PDF <laughs> form, and then, uh, <laughs> but but I 
I loved, I had the real book. I got it from the library uh, for a couple weeks and it was just awesome. And then that brings up another idea or thing that I like to do is I will go to the library and I will shop uh, bakery dessert uh, cookbooks, right? Uh, donuts, there's like a book on donuts or the kind of muffins, things that uh, are almost like a base item. And then there's like 70 different flavorings in it. And I'll take some little notes and I'll walk away with like 10 to 20 recipe ideas without any flavors or without any mixing going on, but just pulling, okay, that would taste good. Uh, like a lemon, like a, like a lemon cream with uh, mint, you know, there's like an Italian cookbook or something. So there's, there's ways to find really cool mixing ideas that you might not think of all the time, but if you get in a rut, that's what I like to do. I like to just, uh, you know, think about cooking because this and desserts in particular, because most, most of these vapes are sweet. Uh, I've only seen once or twice someone make savory and his name's Charles Winthorpe and he's the king of savory. He made a, uh, he made a bloody Mary on Reddit I found, and then he uh, made a barbecue sauce. So he's the, <laughs> his, and then he, he came to me through the lore. So Copel was like, yo, you gotta check out this guy. He made a barbecue sauce vape. And then so I tracked him down and I found him and uh, it's it's on the it's on our our e juice makers team track thing to one day. Does that bring, get paired with pizza and chicken and waffles? Yeah, bring him on and then <laughs> make bloody marys and barbecue sauce. And bloody mary was one of the flavorings I was trying to make one at one point, and I kind of gave up on it because finding a good tomato that tastes like the bloody mary mix and right. finding. Uh, uh, celery. That's what I was looking for. And I have yet to find a good celery. I haven't tried the Chinese versions because I know there is a, a celery in China flavorings, but. Oh, did somebody get carrot? I think I know Darren had carrot. Did you get a uh, carrot ever clay tone? I'm, I'm waiting on, uh, I'm waiting on, on feedback uh, right now before I buy it. Yeah. So I one think on one. Uh, no, no, I tried one on ones is garbage. Um, yeah. But I'm going to try uh, real flavors. Yep. Just waiting on the feedback for that one. Okay. I, I missed the real flavors mega giveaway or whatever the hell happened. <laughs> Everybody ended up with, with real flavors. What are your guys' thoughts on those? Where does that company fit in? Tonight, uh, I tried the, the French toast, and he sent me two versions because he took the sulfites out of them. Because apparently that may have been what was causing the irritation. Thank you. So, Thank you for removing the sulfites. <laughs> <laughs> so he sent me two versions. Version one is absolutely delicious and tastes spot on French toast with a little bit of maple syrup on it. Like there's eggy, there's bready, there's maple syrup. Version two tastes really weird. I, I It just missed the mark. Like there's, it doesn't have syrup, the too much bread, too much cinnamon and it may be a little over egged. I'm telling you, they so, took all the bad stuff out in V2 and now it's not good. Well, no, these were two, two samples he mixed up just for me. Oh, I got you. Um, <laughs> this, I think the, the, the version one that he sent me was closer to what they actually sell. So if it is close to what they sell, their French toast is absolutely delicious. Um, I threw out, um, when I used to buy vape shop bottles, uh, pen, you know, Clayton, you'll know these is a like pancake man and the French toast dude. I bought those, I bought those online and they both, uh, just made my whole mouth burn. Like I got those in. Yeah. I, I know fucking, what you mean. I threw them away. Like I, it was right around the transition of my time from being like a vape shop buyer to mixing. And I poured the bottle out in the sink washed it out and then put my own mix in it. And it was such, such a cool feeling of like, get rid of this trash. And, you know, this is the new era of like putting in, you know, you know, DIY mixing is way better than vape shop stuff usually folks. So if you don't mix, you should definitely learn how, or, uh, you know, buy our one shots that are coming to the USA. That's what you should do. Cause those are going to be delicious. You're going to get hooked on them and then you're not going to be able to vape all the trash that you're used to. But that's a good thing, right? Quality vape. You know, that's that's really kind of what you know. Our team lately has been just 
you know, follow the whole team. If you go to eJuice Makers Facebook page, you can see the whole Mixer team, all our profiles, uh, subscribe to everybody. And then that way you'll get an email and all the flavors shoot you an email with the recipe in it, the notes and everything. So that's nice. And then uh, the LR, you'll get an email too. So if you follow all the mixers, that way you can just get updates in your email about new recipes if you don't already do that. Uh, some parting thoughts, Clayton, what's on your mind? Well, I did want to go back to the whole expiration thing. One thing I did start doing after I found out that the uh, TFA Bavarian cream, see, I said it right this time, Bavarian, not Bavarian. But, Bavarian. Yeah, Bavarian. <laughs> I found out that uh, one of my friends got sick off of it because I, I mixed her a recipe. You know, I mixed her up something she had requested. Uh, she got it, and it tasted rancid, and I figured out that it was the Bavarian cream. Um, one thing I did start doing was I created a Microsoft Word document on my desktop. And I started putting all of the flavors in as I ordered them. You know, as they came in, I put them in. The date that I bought it, you know, like recommended expiration date, two years or whatever. So now I just kind of like try to pay attention to that. And if it shows 2015, I test it and then replace it if, if it's, uh, you know, rancid. Pretty much you can tell off the rip. You smell it. But, yeah, you know. It smells like sour milk and funky cheese. It tastes like brie. It smells like brie cheese is what it smells like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, to sum up a lot of what we talked about today, you know, pick good flavors, pick safe flavors, and then check your flavors to make sure they're good. Don't just pour them into your mix. Because, like, you could be, you could think, you could have the best mix ever, and you go to put the Bavarian cream in it, and then it's rancid, and then you think your recipe sucks, and you scrap it, and you move on, and you had a great recipe. So be sure your flavors are good, and then if you're having problems and you've had you've been a mixer for more than a year start to check your flavors and see where you where you lie with uh making sure everything's good quality and and like they said buy buy the smaller bottles you, you unless you're putting on a vape line you don't need you know that much vanilla custard if it's something that you vape all the time and you're mixing you know 500 mils of it at once sure get the big bottles of that specific flavoring for that recipe you know if you're just testing stuff go with little bottles because you'll probably never use it all. Definitely. Definitely. And then, you know, what Roy was talking about was that he accidentally ordered a 30 mil of uh, vanilla custard too, but that would have been a worse experience had he ordered it. You know. I got a four ounce over there. Yeah. <laughs> it's as old as the cupcake. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, thank you guys for coming. Uh, this is Mix Life Show 10. This is 10. 10 hours of content that you can watch. Uh, you had on Jennifer's show. Yeah, I'm up to 14 today. 14. So, you know, you got plenty of DIY content. You can check out whoever you like to watch, whenever you like to watch us. We're all around the internet. We're on your phone. We're everywhere you are. So thanks for watching. Next live show. Thank you to the host. Glad to have you guys. Good to see you. Uh, have a beautiful Sunday and make some cool stuff this week and post it. And I look forward to seeing it. Thanks. See you next week, Sunday, 6 p.m. Same bat time, same bat channel.